Hi everyone. So uh, to, today we're going to talk about uh, like a uh, this really interesting like uh, like new feature of like new set of features from React called uh, the called concurrent mode. Uh, so th this if you have been using React for a while, uh, you may have heard like like murmurings about concurrent mode for like the longest time. So I like, I don't know when they first announced this, but it was a few years back, and they're still working on it now. Um, so that th there's been like the community, there's some in the community who are like really impatient for concurrent mode. Uh, and like nobody knows when it's going to be released, but um, so but to, today we are going to play with concurrent mode and like to, to see how we can use uh, and we're going to try to use it in NES mode to like um, because concurrent mode is an advanced optimization, uh, so we, we will like try in a proper like a real life app and to see how we can improve like uh, the user experience. There. Yeah. Um, so but before we go any further, uh, let, let, I I also I just want to like uh, talk about a bit about me, but uh. Uh, so to, to to give you like like a background of like what uh like where I come from and like uh what I would have like like what I can like talk about authoritatively authoritatively and what I cannot. Um yeah, so I, I'm a fourth year uh, CS student, so I'm I'm still studying um and NES Mods maintainer, like one of the three core team members of NES Mods. And uh, I'm also an NES Hackers core team member. So uh yeah, so that that thanks to Ital for setting this up. Uh, like everyone with the camera out now, uh from the NES Hackers core team as well. So thanks guys. Um, yeah, so previously, um, so three years ago, I interned at Facebook Singapore, and uh, three years ago, I led a team, uh, CVW, a computing for voluntary welfare organizations. Um, yeah, where, where we did not use React, uh, but I, I used React at Facebook, so uh, I have seen um, how Facebook users react, and, and uh, of course, like GraphQL and Relay and things like that. Uh, but I'm not sure, I cannot remember whether I was using concurrent mode then, uh, but it didn't matter anyway. Uh, yeah, but uh, so the most recent, uh, the, the like when I started using concurrent mode was like this summer. So during this summer, I was a uh, part of the MLH fellowship, the Major League Hacking Fellowship, uh, where I, I worked on the uh, this React scheduling profiler. So uh, we, we'll, we'll see this later. But um, this is an experimental tool uh, that uh, the, the React core team uh, like wanted to work on. Uh, it is an experimental like dev uh, developer tool uh, that, that allows you to like uh, see what's happening in uh, like what React is doing. Like behind the scenes, because concurrent mode can be a bit hard to debug. Uh, we, we, we'll see this later, but uh, you know, like concurrent mode will like uh, stop rendering halfway and it'll do something else. Uh, so it, it can be quite difficult to figure out what, what React is doing behind the scenes. Uh, so th this tool is meant to help with that. And so we are going to use that uh, as a way to like visualize what React is doing uh, in, in NUS mods and our like some suspense demo that we'll be playing with later. Um, yeah, so uh, because of this, uh, I've only been using concurrent mode for a few months, and I've only been using concurrent mode in the context of this uh, profiler. So I do know about some, uh, like how a little bit of how uh, React implements concurrent mode, uh, and as well as like some React internals. But I I have not used uh, concurrent mode in like a production, like a large production. So I do not know like uh, so we're going to talk about the suspense and like data uh, loading using suspense later. But I've never actually used that in a real app. So uh, you so it's going to be like an introduction for that part, and it's not going to be you know in, anything in depth or, or like any like real world experience. And if anybody has like any experience with that, like please feel free to contribute. Um, yeah, and um, also uh, there's not much uh the the content today is not going to be very long. So if you have any questions, like feel free to just like uh, un unmute and like just interrupt me. And uh, the more questions the merrier. Like then then we can really have a discussion about like um. Uh, Various things like and you you can uh we can delve deeper into any topics that you want uh if I have like any uh you know any background that I can talk about it as well yeah because concurrent mode can be like I'm gonna talk only about like a few things but concurrent mode can be quite deep and there are a lot of like funny little details that I keep that continuously changing and things like that so uh, it may be a good time to like talk about it on this um uh, during this workshop if you wanted yeah so uh oh. so the what so the uh the agenda today is uh is going to be just this. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, React concepts. Uh, so the prerequisite for this workshop is that we know uh, that you have used React before and you are comfortable using React. Um, so we are not going to go through like how to use React and JSX and things like that. We are just going to go straight into a React app and like apply concurrent mode to it. So that will be the second part of the of this workshop. It will be we will talk about what concurrent mode is, how we can adopt concurrent mode in an existing app, which is NGS Uh and then some of the APIs that we can, some of the, the concurrent mode APIs uh, like related to that. And then uh, we'll go towards uh, Suspense. And even though Suspense is a public API, like uh, there is still 
uh, we can talk about like, how like how it actually works behind the scenes and also like uh, we had, uh, like suspense for data loading which is not a public API yet. Yeah. So and uh, again, if there are any questions, please just let me. Um, yeah. So the the found, uh, to to understand concurrent mode, we need to talk a little bit about the foundation, uh, like some foundational like concepts first. So the first thing is that uh, React does things in a in a two phase manner. Um, yeah. So the one one really nice thing about React, uh, from an end user like a developer's point of view, is that it is extremely declarative, right? So you uh, this is one the one of the main selling points of React is that when you use React, you just declare the XML structure, like some XML like structure. And uh, React will figure out what needs to be changed, and you will just like put it on the screen, uh, and you don't need to care about like different things and like uh, updating. So you just like declare what you want and stuff will appear on the screen. But how this actually works is uh, so React conceptually does this in two phases. Uh, the first the first phase is that uh, it's called a render phase. Um, the names are a little bit confusing because these are like uh, these are conceptual like concepts, so they are not not really how it's actually implemented. Um, but there's a render phase. Uh, and during this render phase, uh, the reconciler, so this is done by the reconciler, and this reconciler will go through, like, uh, you'll render your components to, into elements. So if you have seen, like, a transport, uh, like, JSX before, it will be, like, react.createElement, whatever, right? Yeah, so it will take your components and you will render it into, like, elements. And these elements will be in a, in a tree. I believe this is a virtual DOM tree. And then um, it will pass it on to, like, the renderer, which is in the commit phase. And so then the, so the commit phase, during the commit phase, a renderer, yeah, so again, it's confusing because the renderer does things in the commit phase uh, after the render phase. But yeah, anyway, uh, the, the, the renderer will take this tree and it will like put it on screen. So it will, um, it will already, you will be told like what changes to make and it will just like uh, update the, so for example, um, yeah. So th there are multiple uh, types of renderers. Uh, so React is, is quite flexible and quite extensible in the, in the sense that like you can swap out the renderers. Uh, so the most common renderer that most of us will be familiar with is will be React DOM, right? So React DOM is the one that will update like DOM elements. So like if you try to render like a div, uh, or like if your element will be returns a div, it will uh it will render a div on screen. Uh, but other renderers will include things like uh, React Native, uh, that will render to like native UIs as well as like uh, Ink, which can render to the uh render to a common line interface, which is uh, quite interesting because then you can use Flexbox in the terminal. Which is pretty mind blowing, like if you've if never tried it before. Um, yeah. Um, so in concurrent mode, uh, so currently uh, in legacy mode, uh, legacy or sync mode, like depending on, uh, yeah, so there are like two names, right? Like legacy or sync mode. Um, so in, in the current the current React that, you are, that everyone's using, um, both of these are like they cannot be interrupted. So when you, uh, like, say, when you click a button and then you, you have a state update, right? Uh, when you state update, uh, like your 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 component will um you will render and you immediately commit and both of the render phase and commit phase will be done together and it cannot be interrupted so you will just like do everything in one shot but this can be uh, really expensive um so, so sometimes like especially like for example you are rendering a lot of elements or like your render is just like you are doing some work like some filtering or something like that in your in your render and this uh, makes it very expensive so then your render can take a really long time uh, and then the commit can also take a really long time and so what happens is that if the user is clicking like clicks or does any interactions in between like while this is happening, um, the browser cannot do anything because uh, JavaScript is single threaded, so it will do this. It will do this work until it's done, and then only when it's done can you like actually uh, like you know like um, process the events and things like that. So uh, the UI essentially frees up, which is a pretty bad user experience. Um, so th th this is a visualization of um, of this uh, by. Uh, Andrew Clark. So this this uh, visualization, this thing came up. This image was posted uh, quite a while back. So this is called async mode. Uh, but anyway, in, in single mode, so this is uh, basically what we just mentioned, where everything is not interruptible. And uh, so if you click over here, everything can only be handled at the end, right? Uh, but so what concurrent mode? One of the key features on concurrent mode is that um, like the renders are, are interruptible now. So if we go back to this, uh, so the commit phase is still not interruptible. Uh, commit phase is always still like, you know, it's still done as one chunk. So uh, if your commit phase is expensive, then that, that, that's too bad. Uh, but so concurrent mode will only optimize the render phase. And the, the way it does it is that it will, uh, it will keep, like it will, it will do things, uh, they call it time slicing, but you'll slice the render into different like time slices. And uh, so it will essentially like do a little bit of render, like it will render a little bit, and then it will like return control back to the browser. And the browser can 
to do whatever it wants to do. Uh, so for example, if you click like over here, if you click here, so it renders a little bit, it checks the browser, uh, browser doesn't want to do anything, so it renders a little bit more, and then you click here. And so you handle the click, or like if you click anywhere inside here, it will handle the click. Uh, and if you don't execute any state updates, or uh, it will React will just continue rendering once you are done handling your click. Um, so th th this allows uh, like expensive renders to be um, to still remain like um, pretty much like interactive. Um, but if you execute and and also um, the render can like uh, conceptually it can be like a branch. So you, like you you render a little bit and if let's say you click and you execute a state update. And the state update causes this uh, render, this partial render, to be uh, outdated, and like you, it can't be used anymore. We can throw can throw this away and start rendering from scratch. Okay, um, yeah. So th th this is really um, so it's, it's really quite flexible. Uh, yeah, and again, uh, commit the commit cannot be. Uh, oh, you even though it, the render phase is split into multiple like time slices, the the commit must uh, nothing will appear on screen until the commit phase happens. Okay. The, because like the, the render phase basically builds a tree before like the like stuff stuff like is committed to the screen. So you during the render phase, even though it's, uh if it while it's happening, you will not see anything on screen. Yeah, so um that's it. So let's try to uh, adopt concurrent mode. Um and so the the way we will do this is that um yeah, we we will not adopt concurrent mode in like some brand new toy, right? We'll do it in like actually like actual NES mode. Uh, so I hope everyone has uh, downloaded the has cloned the NES mods code base. Have you all? I, I hope you say yes. Um, yeah. So what what we're going to do? So the way I'm thinking of doing this is that like so I'm going to um show you how to like uh like show you the individual steps, and then you, you can follow along. So um if you uh so, so while you are like following along, like if you have any questions, like. You can ask it because otherwise it will just be like observing me doing it and then it will not make sense after that, I think. Uh, even though it, it, it is actually not that. Um, and so the, the first step would be to uh, clone the NES mod code base. So I hope you have done that. Uh, so I also hope that you have a, like a development environment set up for this. Uh, so like if you can young start and you can open NES mod in the browser, that, that's good enough. Um, and what uh, yeah, it will also be good if you can uh, if you can check out the functional search box branch. Um, so what I've done in this branch is that if you uh, I did it already. But the, the the difference with master is that I have like converted two two components. So the search box component and the venues container component, uh, venues container component component. Uh, it's called that. Uh, into a functional component so that we can use uh, we 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 can use some like React uh, some concurrent mode APIs. Uh, which one? Yeah. Uh, previously it was a class API. I mean, it was a class component, so we had to I had to change it first. Um, and also another thing is that I have like uh removed some of some uh optimizations that we have done, uh, so that we can really see the the benefits of concurrent. Yeah. So the uh, so what we can do is we can just like start that. Uh, so yarn start. Okay. This, this is like my little alias, but you you can you can just run yarn start, uh, on the functional search block branch, and we wait for it to to start. Um, yeah, okay, that, that was pretty good. Um, yeah, so this is the regular NES mods. Uh, if you have poked around, you can you can see that you can, uh, I mean, it is a development level of NES mods, so you can do everything that you can in the production NES mods. Um, but what, I, what we are going to work on today is that uh, is this venue search. So the venue search, if you're not familiar with the venue page on NES mods, it is just, uh, it is a page where you can like uh, look, look at venues. Uh, within NES mods, it also has bus timings. Uh, oh, it used to have bus timings until it broke. Yeah, I, I, I guess it's broken now, but um, yeah. Yeah, so the, the, this is a list of all the known the known venues in NES. Uh, NES. Uh, so we, the way we build this is that we take uh, all the all the timetables and we take all the, the venues for all the all the classes and we just like, try them out into this list. Um, so th this list is not very long. Uh, and you, you can like filter by like typing a page. Like yes one, this uh, common, etc. Um, so what is the issue with this page? Right? There, there seems to be no issue with this page. It, it, it seems fine. But the thing is that um, we are on a very fast machine. So what, what we can try to do is that we can go to a slow, a slow browser. So we can simulate a low-end mobile. Yeah, okay, let, let me just increase the size 
the cross to the so then you can see this um yeah so if you type like as you can you can hear my keyboard my keyboard is really loud so you, you you can you can see like i type as and we wait like a few milliseconds for it to for it to come out and uh, th this is uh, in my opinion this is pretty unacceptable uh, even though nus uh, even though in singapore we do most of us use uh, pretty high end devices like high end fast devices this can be a this can be a problem uh, for like people on like older phones for example and uh, in th definitely in a in a much larger in an app with a much larger larger user base like say like you know facebook.com or like even like shopee uh, you you're going to like this this is the main this is a big concern um and what we can uh what we can do now is that we can like see what wait before we do that we should um like enable con concurrent workers uh we, we can actually like uh see see the performance the performance like what, what's happening behind the scenes using the performance tab uh here and so we, we can let, let me just record profile so i press the backspace twice and that renders so we, we can we can see what like what the browser is doing um and th this is in sync mode. So uh, any small like like pretty much all the apps out there is still using uh, sync the, the old legacy sync mode. And you can see that there is this like super this key down event um, is is really really long, right? It's like uh, we can look at the frame rate here. One one frame per second. It took like eighteen one thousand eight hundred and twenty milliseconds to to like uh, filter this. So when you press a character, it took one hundred one thousand eight hundred over milliseconds to like figure like do everything like uh filter list render uh let react render and commit to the screen um and we, we can see yeah uh it's just really slow uh sync render so what we can do is we can try to improve this uh yeah well, i mean we do want to improve it so what nus mods has done uh if we go to the production NUS mods, um so what what we have done is that we we do like a little bit of like drop in um, so if we, so if you, on the production, it's not, so th this is the regular, like uh, no throttling, uh, it works pretty much the same way. Uh, like it seems the same, it's not, actually not, but uh, if we, if we use a low end mobile, it's actually like pretty performing. Okay. You, 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 you can see that the list is like lagging a little bit behind. And th this is because we use, we essentially use like a set timeout. Um, and so we update, we try to update like the, the box first and then we like set timeout and we do a good filtering later. Uh, and we also um so like multiple key key presses will also be debound. Um yeah, and but when when we debounce, uh you we filter fewer times uh as and we and because we uh we, we debounce with a with a like a timeout of zero. So essentially it's the, if the device is slow enough that it takes a while, um it will then debounce more. Yeah, so it, it like it's quite sort of scales, the debouncingness, the debouncing behavior kind of scales with the device like uh speed. Which is uh, pretty good. So um, this behavior is not bad, uh, but if you look at the code, it's actually a bit of a mess. Uh, you know, there, there's like set timeouts and like like request animation frames or like in different places. So it's it's quite messy. And um, and th this uh, these optimizations only work for this page, right? We we can't like if we have other like search like for example this search this search is actually quite performant. But like we, if this had like performance issues, we cannot do that. Uh, so what one thing like that the, the React team is trying to do is that um, they are trying to have uh, like implement more uh, optimizations, like more optimizations that are common across like different web apps into React itself, so that um, like programs are fast by default. So like um, and th this has been a focus for the team. It seems to be the focus for the team now um, going forward. Um, so like there are other like so competitors with React like say like Svelte or Vue, they tend to like focus on like bundle size. Uh, but the React team is not so much focused on the size, but rather like the advanced optimizations, the like unlocking advanced optimizations. So uh, Concrumble is what one of these optimizations. So anyway, uh, so um, as so now now that you've seen the optimizations that we have implemented in the venue search, um, I have actually removed them here. So in the functional components in this branch, the functional search branch, you will not have these optimizations, and so we get this ultra slow like behavior. Um, which is what we want. Now. So what we can do now is that uh, the first thing we can do is because this is on sync mode, uh, this is on legacy React. What what we want is to uh, the first thing that we need to do is like, adopt concurrent mode, and concurrent mode cannot be adopted like like in uh, incrementally. Uh, when you when you adopt concurrent mode, it's like the whole app or nothing. Um, they do have something called blocking mode, which is like a um, intermediate like so you get some concurrent mode behavior uh, APIs. Uh, but we are not going to do that today. We just we are just going to go all out into all of con concurrent mode. Um, 
And so currently, the, the way we do this for a regular app is that um, you first want to wrap, um, to, to make sure that nothing will break, you want to uh, wrap your main app in like string mode. Uh, but we are not going to do that today. But if you are going to do this in another app, you are probably you probably will want to wrap your app in, uh, in string mode so that you get like um, notifications of, uh, you know, like bad behavior and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and the other thing, uh, so the, the next step to uh, adopting concurrent mode is that we want to install uh, experimental, React, uh, experimental React versions. Uh, so in the, the production builds of React, like, like this, so we are currently using 16.13.1, we are not, uh, this does not include concurrent mode. And uh, the, the, the version that's coming out 17.0, I believe it's alpha one now, it will not, it will also not include concurrent mode. So what we need to do is install like experimental builds. Uh, and we can do that by, uh, so we do like, I said no. Yeah, so we oh, not, not that. So we can add uh, React like experimental and React down experimental. So um, you will want to do this for all the React uh, all, all the React related dependencies in your dependency. Uh, you want to install the experimental version of them. Uh, but in and your small we only have React and React down. So we're just gonna do that. And that may take a while. Um, and then the next step is to like change the way we like start here. So if you're familiar with like, uh, if you have created your own React app before, you you know that uh, you start off like, like the the entry point for React is like this uh, React DOM dot. It's a React DOM dot render, some somewhere, right? Um, so we have two like entry points uh, to NGS one. Uh, one of them is the export. Is the export table. So the, the way we export timetable is that we have a, like a special build of NES mod that only renders the timetable, and we take a screenshot of that and send it back to you. That, that is the way we export um, timetables in NES mods. But we are not going to uh, talk about that today. We are not, not going to look at that today. We're only going to look at that. So we will like look at main.txx like in the entry. This part, this part. Um, and so really dom render is the old way of doing things. In concurrent mode, um, this is no longer the to enable concurrent mode, you do not use it anymore. So what you want to do is you want to do like react dom dot uh, create root, and you create this root. So we have this. So the the, the root you basically create a root using the element uh, the the dom the dom element, and then you do the render here. So then the the rest of it goes here. Yeah, but this will not work. Because uh, create root is, a, is an experimental and unstable API. So uh, the convention that the React team has used is that they will prefix like most of these APIs with an unstable underscore. So they are going to use that unstable underscore create root. Uh, but in the final version, once React once concurrent mode is released to the public, you will not have this underscore like unstable underscore. Uh, but we are going to see a lot of it today. Uh, yeah. So we will just like do this, and uh, we have installed everything. So we are just uh, we can start again, and I hope this works. And so we we'll wait for that to do. Um, is everyone uh, following along? Does it make sense with people? Sorry, sorry, I want to ask, right? Yeah. So you mentioned that you remove all the optimizations and you'll be super laggy, but then you also sort of like optimize it by using set timeouts and all. But set timeout also runs on the main browser thread, right? It's just yeah, that right. the debouncing is the one that sort of like makes it uh like calculate less of the stuff to be rendered and all. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, so I I, I forgot to uh yeah, I, I forgot to mention it. Yeah, so it's a. Um, yeah, so what we do is that we we debounce. Uh, so when you type, if you type very quickly, um, it will it will only calculate at the end, right? Um. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So the the main issue is this. So th this approach is not perfect. Uh, because the render will still take a long time. So even though we debounce, when it's done, it will it will do like a long render. And if you try to type during that long render, it's not going to be responsive. So it, it is still a bit pro problematic. It's just that this is kind of like pretty much the best that we can do with the with the existing uh, with like single. 
I mean the the it's like the you know the uh, balance between like effort and the the rewards, uh the the, the benefits right. So th this is like pretty much like the best we can do. Uh, I mean there there are better way there are more uh, advanced ways we can do this. For example, we can offload the, uh we can offload filtering to another uh filtering and sorting and things like that on these expensive like operations into a web worker for example, so that you will actually run a separate thread, in the browser. Um. Yeah, but. Yeah, but concurrent will, will, will uh, solve this for us because then we can split the we can split the expensive render and so if you try to type in between, you will you will basically interrupt the render. It will update the state. It will show the text. It will update the text box, and then you will like you will just like uh, render the list again. Yeah, which we will see in a bit. Yeah. So anyway, so, something seems like that. Unstable creative is not function. Well, pretty sure I tried it yesterday. Let Let's see. Oh, we can look at the React code base. Um, I believe uh, I believe this is correct. Yeah, correct. I'm just going to see what, what the version of React is. Um, it should be locked. Oh, right. I, I forgot. So, NGS mods has a. Um, we have a little hack. Yeah, I forgot to, to disable. So, uh, we have uh, this in our, in our webpack configs. We, we do this like hot loader thing, which, which uh, injects a, like, a different version of React DOM, uh, like 16 point something. So, we need to disable it. So, we just like comment it. Coming back to this part, yeah. So if you if you are following along, just like look for how to do in the uh, perfect config dev js and comment there, and then uh, it should. Yeah, it's gonna take a while to build again. Um, yeah, are there any other questions? So how buggy is this and uh, is it production ready yet? Uh it pretty much is, I think. Uh, so what what um so it even though concurrent is like considered experimental, it's used in production at Facebook. Uh on Facebook.com it, it is using concurrent mode. Uh, but I don't think it's not used everywhere in Facebook. I think, uh, but the um, like it's actually built and tested. Like um, like it's built for like Facebook use cases. So um, and the, the the reason why Facebook can but the reason why Facebook can use it in production is that like um, like I mean the React core team is from Facebook, so it's like they they have like you know like first class support. So if anything breaks within Facebook, they can modify React to like fix it. So if if you notice like if you look at like comments on Facebook uh, on on React. There, there are a lot of like reverts because they, they do like refactor and then you break something and then you do a revert and sometimes you got revert revert and then revert revert, revert. and it's, it's quite yeah it's quite interesting how, how, how they do things yeah but so uh, outside Facebook it may not be uh, because we don't have like such a deep like support uh, from the Facebook core team so it may not be uh, yeah it may not be so wise to use it uh, but you can especially in a small app where like you, if anything if anyone API change you can like update your app to like fit the new like to use the new APIs. Like if it's if you can you can do that cheaply then yeah it is it's great. And then you can uh, take advantage of all these like performance optimizations and stuff. Yeah so uh looks like we have a crash. Oh th this is uh some legacy API error. Th because again uh, we are using experimental so th this is like close to close to master version of uh of React. And um so we are using basically using React 70 experimental yeah uh, yeah, so if you notice, like, so everything seems to still work, I think, I hope. I've never actually, like, looked at other pages. In yeah, but we have concurrent mode working now. So, uh, but, okay. Yeah, and uh, typing still works if you go to, uh, but, yeah, it's still, it's still really slow. Um, so, what, what's going on, right? Uh, the thing is that concurrent mode, like, by, by itself, is probably not going not to do much for you. Like, it's not going to, 
uh, it, in some cases, they will actually like improve your performance. Like for, for the standing profiler that I was working on, it actually did. But I just like, I, I, I just switched it to uh, Conharmo and then like everything was slightly steadier. But by, by itself, it probably would not uh, like improve things. So we, we can actually still try, try to see what, what's going on here. So in, I remember in the past, it will do one very big chunk here. I think it may still do a very big chunk. Let's see. Or it may split. Okay, we, we, we see what happens. It may, it may do time slicing. Okay, still doing one very big chunk. Uh, and the thing is that, uh, or what we, okay, this is not react when we Um, And th this is happening because of, uh, um, in React, when, um, so, what happened here is that we are scheduling a state update when we when we press it uh, when we do a key press right so there's a, some sort of browser event so when you click or when you type something to the browser uh, and in react when all, all the state updates that are scheduled within within this uh, within this event will be like ready uh, will be like executed in a, like rendered in a single uh, so you will not so if any state updates like so for example if I type all the state updates here will be rendered in single so what we want to do is that we want to uh, defer as much as as much work as possible out of this uh, out of this event here. and so that that's what we're going to do. Now. Um, yeah. So let, let let me just make sure that I cover everything that I want to cover. Yeah, we and we can actually get a better view of this. So we can use uh, the profiling version, the profiling build of React. So it, um so the React Dev tools has like this like a uh, React DOM has this like profiling you can import from this. Uh, I think we may need to like set, we may need to appease TypeScript. You see, but this, this is a ooh, this is is a special like build of like React that will um that has like profiling features and both. So you can use like the uh you can use the profiler the profiler with this build of uh, with this version of like React DOM, but uh, what this also gives you is that you can use a scheduling profiler. So um, this feature flag is enabled for experimental and profiling builds, and the builds that are experimental and profiling. So what what we need is this plus that experimental version. Um, so I think this is built already. So what we can do is that we can just break out profile. We do the same thing. So I just press backspace twice. We stop. Um, Yeah, so we, we, we see pretty much the same as what happened just now. So I hope this works. So we will just save this uh, profile up. So this 804. Um, and we go to re re scheduling profiler dot just now. So I, I will send this link in the chat. Yeah, so th th this is the, uh, yeah, so th th this is the thing that I built, uh, that I have to build over someone. Um, but it, it is actually stored within the React code base. So this like some is pretty much an official uh, project, uh, but me and yeah, I'm, yeah, it seems like only I'm contributing to, to it right now. Uh, but so we'll take like 804 and we can show it within the profiler. So it seems like we have like this, uh, okay, uh, yeah, first we, we need to know how to read this, right? Um, what's happening here is that uh, there's a timeline here. So it's, it's quite similar to this, right? There's a timeline and uh, there's a plane chart below. Uh, so what we'll see is also a plane chart here. Um, and so this should be exactly the same. Uh, you can zoom by pressing shift and scroll. And um, so up here, what, what this tool gives you is that it tells you what React is doing behind the scenes. So what we have here is that there's this bar, this bar in white containing all the little circles. Like it shows you like state updates and like later on we will see like suspense. Uh, suspense also, like suspense events will also turn up, turn up here. So when suspense wake up, you also see dots appearing up here. So, uh, so over here we can see that um, so something triggered this like this render over here. Oh, uh, oh, wait. Before that, below it is a uh, uh, like lane. So right now we only, we only see one lane, one lane of events. So uh, we we internally we call this React measures, but uh, essentially will tell you like what like this is uh, a chunk of render uh, of rendering, and then after that there will be a chunk of like commits. So we see this render this long render chunk render phase here, and then we see a commit phase, right? Uh, and during the commit phase, if you are familiar with like use uh, use the uh, use effect and use layout effect hooks, uh, you will also see them happening here. So, for example, use layout effects will, will all your use layout effect callbacks will be executed in, in this little, little bit here, and uh, use effects will appear after that. 
So um, yeah, use effect is called passive effects, uh, and the other ones are called layout effects. Uh, so layout effects will occur will be executed during the commit phase, and uh, use effect will be executed after the commit phase. And we can see that happening here. Um, yeah, so it seems like there's not much being done in uh, layout effects. So that's uh, that's good. We don't want to keep commit phase long, uh, so that we can, you know, not not lengthen it and not block the browser for so long. Uh, yeah, so what we can see is that there's this super long branded chunk over here, and it seems to be caused by this state of it. Up here. So it seems like there are three state of it. So like search box, venues, container, component. Okay, can you see this? Uh, I hope you can see. Yeah, uh, and uh, search box again. So it, it's fine that there are like three of these, but so th these three of them are, are causing this render. Uh, and this is expensive render, right? As we have seen just now. Uh, it seems like there's like 192 milliseconds. What we want to do is we want to defer as much work out of this uh this chunk as possible. And so what we can do there is using uh, a new concurrent mode API called uh, a new hook thing that can be used in concurrent mode called a uh, use deferred value. Um if we look at the code, it will I hope it will become uh, a little bit clearer. Uh, we are just gonna optimize like the typing, the typing experience. So like um we have like uh handlers for like when you click out and things like that, but we are gonna just ignore that now. We're just only gonna care about typing. So the when you type uh the on, this is the, the event handler that we call. Um, so we can see that we can see being used in this input. So the input on chain will call an input. Okay, so this like comes in directly from uh from like the handler from, from React right, basically. Um and what we do is like we'll pull out the term and we'll like call on change. Uh on change is, is a prop at least. If we go up here, yeah, props. It comes in from the venue container. Okay. So we we'll put that up. You see on change on search box change. Okay, and so on search box change, we'll basically just uh set this into a state, like a string that's on state in this component state. And the search box value uh, is will be set to a search term. So th th this is like redundant now, but we are going to use the use deeper value over here. So we uh, we do that. But search term will be like thrown into like all kinds of things. So you update the URL, which I believe I have this thing. Did I disable it? I think I disabled it. So I, we, we have some issues with the, oh, it's disabled here. Yeah, but you, so this update URL will be called and it'll be used here. Uh, we'll use it elsewhere. So yeah, so we'll search the, we'll search venues, we'll filter venues using this, and we'll like pass it to venue list. And venue list is actually quite expensive. Um, so the, the venue list will like sort and like group and things like that. So this like non-linear time in the operations. Um, so th this is part of like where the cost of uh, filtering comes from like I mean it's not really just filtering because they're sorting and things like that. So um yeah I don't really know why we're sorting here. There are I mean there are ways around this, but currently essentially we have an expensive render going on. And this is like so this is a classic the classic problem that React concurrent mode can solve. Uh, which is why it's like a perfect like a perfect way to uh like a perfect place to use concurrent mode. Um yeah so the what, what we can do is that we we just want to defer this. So what different what use deferred value does is that it allows us to defer a value to some sometime in the future. So we go back to slide. I don't know whether I have a slide for this. Um, I do have a slide for this. So uh, yeah, th this is basically how we use it. It's, it's, a, it's a really simple hook. So we take a value that, that will, uh, so it's like the state, right? So we take like the search, the search block value, and we stick them inside here. And uh, then we'll defer the, the other one. Um, we will defer this value. So th this value will not change until basically after like all the other like, stuff has happened. Like conceptually, that's all we need to know. Uh, yeah, so the, the, the effect of this code is that it will update the input element like immediately. So when, when there's a state update, value will change. This one, the deferred value will not change because it's deferred. So the input element will be rendered with the new value, where, while the expensive component will be rendered with the old value. And then, uh, then after that, there will be a second render where this will be updated to the to match value. Okay, so that if that makes sense, um, we can do that here. We can we can just follow this like really just follow that. Um, and so we will just take uh, use deeper value. And then uh, we'll just write this in use deeper value. And of course, we need to import this. Um, and we import this from the app. And I believe they should work, but we may need to satisfy again. We may need to satisfy TypeScript or not. Oh, yeah. Okay. This, this happens because we are not um, because we 
because like I, I believe it's because of the list of hooks chain. Oh, I guess we may need to unstable this. I'm just going to rename it to uh, use different value so that it's slightly easier to deal with. But I hope this works. Yeah. Um, and so we, we are again we're not in the we have like switch back to the non not the non throttling uh no no CPU throttling yeah we have disabled CPU throttling here. And you, you can see that yeah it works pretty much the same as before. Um, but I don't know whether you can you can see this over the screen share, but the, the list is filtering slightly behind the box now. Um, yeah, it's, it's just it's a very slight uh, difference, but it's almost not almost unnoticeable. Uh, but if you go to the low end mobile, this is where the difference becomes a lot clearer. You can see there's a lot more um, like the, the text files will, will update before the before the list updates. Um, and so it becomes a lot more performant. And we, we can actually see this happening if we like record a profile. Um, so I'll just type like a bunch of things and we, we'll stop. Um, yeah, and so that, there's a lot of things happening here. Uh, which is partly like about the reason why the scaling profile is needed because th this is not very usable. Um, so what, what we're going to do is we're just going to save that out. Uh, we're just going to export that and we are going to the scaling profiler and we are going to import that. Uh, yeah, so we, we can see that there's a lot more things going on now. It, uh, just now it was just one long render and a second long render. Whereas now there's like so, like, you know, so many little bars, you know, like what's happening, right? Uh, so we, we, we can look in it in more detail. So th this is still there's still a like a somewhat long render over here, but it's 30, 34 milliseconds now versus like 100 plus that we had just now. I believe this may be the clip. Um, let, let's do a later one. Yeah, so we we have this render over here, um, and so there's like some updates here, and then there's a second update here, uh, and this update is scheduled within the passive vets. So I'm, I'm not sure what this is, but it seems like this is the the deeper the deeper value thing. Um, and so there is a much shorter render here. Uh, and then after that, then there is a concurrent, like this like slice, like time slice render that's happening here. So th this, this will be the typical like concurrent mode render that, that you will see. Uh, it will do a little bit and then, uh, you know, it will do a little bit and stop, then do a little bit and stop, do a little bit and stop, do a little bit and stop, etc. Um, and then after that, once it's done, so it seems like over here, um, at, the end, at the end of a set of renders, you will have a commit phase. But it seems like what happened here is that I hit, the, I hit another key while it was still rendering. rendering. Okay, so uh oh um I need to mention this too, but like um the, these lanes so that there are the different like gray lines going across, right? The, these these rows are called like uh fiber lanes. So um the reconciler now has a like, concept of lanes, uh and lanes are somewhat sort of tied to priorities. Um so for example, so the higher the higher the, the lower the number, so like lane three, uh lane three will be at a higher priority than like lane 13. Right? So it will say here, so if you look at the cover the box. At the bottom, it says lane 13. Uh, this one says lane 3. So lane 3 is high as a high priority, which makes sense because here, over here, we have another key press. And when, at a, when we hit the key, we expect like the, the key press, the stuff that happened during the key press to be done at a higher priority. And so we, we can see that happening here. So uh, and we had a low priority like lane 13 um, render going on, which I believe will, should be the, the venue list. Um, and then after that, then we hit the key while it was rendering halfway. And uh, and what we do is that what React does is that it does a sync render as mentioned earlier. So when we hit a when we when we um during an event handler, the the stuff that happens during that will be done in sync mode. It will like deop be deoptered to sync mode. So we, we do a like a quick de um sync mode render over here. And then after that, then there's a it seems like there is a state update. Um so all the, the render over here is like thrown away. Uh and it starts again. So we, we do another like uh like uh, like slice render again. Uh, so we, we do a whole bunch of them, and then we hit the we hit the key again. Uh, so that stuff got thrown away again, and we, we start again over here. Um, but it managed to 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 finish at the end. So at the end of of, of this many little render slices, we get a commit phase, and that commit phase works out. Um, yeah. So th this is how we get um, you you can see it going on right. Um, 
the text box is getting updated like pretty much immediately, like very, very quickly. And uh, the list is only being updated like, at a much lower rate um, because it's so expensive. Um, yeah, and we, we can see that happening again when we like mesh the keys after that. Yeah, that, does this make sense? Does anyone have any like questions? Okay, so I think if not, um, that would be actually be the end of the, the first one on like uh, basically like adopting concurrent in uh, existing app. So if, yeah, this is a really good time to ask any questions. But I, I, I yeah. So like, how does the use default value work? So is it like, it sets a callback? Like, like how does it know like when, when to, like, and then the next thing in the background is it still like a timeout or you just like, like use either callback or something like that is it um yeah so i'm not actually sure how, how it works so I, I looked at the implementation so we can actually do an implementation now if you like um so like use default value uh so somewhere inside here let me find again i'll use this one yeah so then it does a this, this special using default value Hmm. Oh, this this one, yeah. Hey, no, I think this is not the one. This is the one. Yeah. So it, it basically just does this. Uh, so I don't really know what it's doing. Um. So we, if you are familiar with like use transition, it seems kind of similar. I said that there's a callback, and if you look at the docs, uh, they are also mentioned side by side. So what I think, um. So I think like conceptually it doesn't matter like how it's implemented. Uh or like how like when when the default value actually comes out. Um wait then let, let me try to find it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So the, the docs do mention, let me explain this. The docs do mention that there is a timeout MS. Uh so 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 you, you mentioned that like uh I, I think you mentioned something very fair of this like timeout. Um but so the docs mentioned this. But apparently, like uh, a few months ago, in sometime in August this year, like they disabled time IMS. So, uh, but one one thing about React Concurrent is that like the APIs are changing very quickly. So this is not documented yet. The PR that disables time IMS does say that the docs will be updated at some point, but they're not yet. Uh, so currently, it's, it, you still see time IMS over here, but it's actually not used. Um, so there, there currently doesn't seem to be a way to like tell, uh, like to specify how long this value should be deferred for. Um, so it's basically just like okay, like right now. Yeah, but th this is a canonical example, uh, which is basically similar to what we're doing. And this is also the only config, which is the same as set time if you have seen, uh, not, not set time, but like set uh, use transition. Use transition has a similar like set uh, time IMS, which is also disabled now. I, th I think if you are if you're interested in this, you can uh, you can like search. Um, so what I found yesterday was that uh, somebody asked like Dan Abramov like uh, how they can implement uh, use default value in userland like so outside of React, uh, and there there was some he responded with some interesting like tidbits, but I can't remember exactly what, what he mentioned. But you can look it up. It was it's somewhere on Twitter. Uh, the tweets are not very new anymore, but it should still be should probably be relevant. Yeah. Any other questions? Otherwise, uh, we can move on to uh, suspense. Uh, this is like the second part, and uh, it will probably be shorter than the first one. So, uh, yeah, just because I don't have that much experience with suspense, so I've used I've used suspense. So suspense is a way that uh, we can tell React to basically like suspend like. To wait for something like pause, right? Rendering for like some particular subtree of your 
you know, of your components until like data is coming or like when it's ready to essentially when it's ready to be when it's when it's ready to render. Um, yeah, so I've I've only used like suspense for like the CPU like CPU. You no, know, like when when we are doing like some expensive CPU stuff. Uh, so what I get like um, so in case we need. Well, yeah. yeah. So, uh, what, what, what I say in the scheduling profiler is that the scheduling profiler, like the import process, can take a really long time. So, what, what, I'll do, what I did was that I, I put the, the importing process, the importing function call, which is very, very long, like it can take like 10 seconds. Um, I stuck that into a, into a web worker. And so, the web worker will process it on another, another thread. Uh, in, like you know, in a, in a web worker, it's basically does on a separate thread. So we have like parallel, actually parallel, uh, JavaScript execution. Uh, and so then my the component that like that triggers that will suspend until this is done. So th this can be used for um, but the API for this is also changing very quickly. Uh, so we'll, we'll we'll see that in a bit. Um, so the the simplest case for the suspend for suspense API is like it's basically just this. Uh, we have a suspense component that we wrap our component like whatever that we suspend with. Uh, so if you're familiar with like error boundaries, this is very similar. Um, so like th this component, like you may have like a very deep tree of components. Uh, you may have components that like have contain other components that suspend. And it will, if any of them suspend, you will, it will basically travel all the way up to like the, the, the first suspense boundary that you find. And that will, that will be the boundary that suspends. Um, and this is also, this is also quite interesting because it, it is basically implemented the same way as error boundaries. Um, and so the way we use this is that uh, the, the way we make things suspend is that we throw a promise. So I don't know, I, I, I find this is a really interesting idea because like most, most times you will throw, only throw errors, like pretty much everywhere you only throw errors, but over here we are suspending by throwing a promise. Uh, so you basically declare a promise and you throw it and that will be the way that React knows that it needs to suspend. So it's really implemented the same way as, um, as how the error boundaries work. So, but before it, before it like checks for error boundaries, it will basically check for like check whether it's a promise that was thrown. And then if the uh, if it caught a promise, then it will basically do a suspend instead of like a error bound like a you know instead of like treating it as an error. Um, yeah. So th this is basically the 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 way we suspend. Uh, but the way we actually use suspense is that typically like things are done as a under with this concept of a resolver. Um. Yeah, so what, what this does is that it will basically like wrap. Um, it seems to be a pattern, that, uh, like a common pattern used in like um, anything that's suspense for data, for data loading. Um, so like the, the fundamental one, as in the deeper uh, API, like the, it's not really deeper, but like the, the reference implementation is React Cache. Uh, so there's a React Cache, React Cache has, has a method called like uh, create resource. And um, so create resource will take in a promise. I don't know whether it was like, yeah, that was like, but we can we can look at the um, yeah we can look at the source. Uh, did, if you ever like work with a React code base, this is pretty much how uh, there's very very little docs, so you just need to read the code. Uh, it, it gets it gets okay after a while. But so what create resource does is it returns a resource, which is basically um, this resource is specific to this particular package called React Cache. So this is a package of React Cache. Um, this uh. It doesn't have to have these properties, but it this one has like read and preload. Um, and the idea the idea behind doing this is that what we want to do is that we want to preload as fast as possible, um, like as early as possible. So currently, most apps will do like a fetch on render. Uh, this is probably quite uh, like if you have worked with like React components that fetch data. This is a very common pattern in current apps, uh, where like. When in the render in the in the render you you will either call fetch like that or like you wrap it in like a use effect, um so like you know like a passive effect where like you, uh we do a fetch and then we keep like like a loading state, uh and once it's loaded we render the component below. This is how like apps will typically do it. So it's called fetch on render because when we we fetch when we when we start we start fetching in render, but this is slightly inefficient because uh, you know the rendering may take a few like um uh, may may take a few like milliseconds, um. Actually, there, there are two problems. So th this particular implementation here. Uh, so I just wrote this. I probably wrote it when I was too sleepy. But uh, this this is actually not probably not going to work uh, because when you do a fetch like that, um, like we cannot 
be guaranteed that a render will only record once. So, um, yeah, so when you do this, you may, you may fetch multiple times, uh, which is bad. Especially in Concurrible, where like, you render a little bit, and then you, you do a state update, and this audio is thrown away, and you start rendering again, right? So this, in this particular case, you already will get rendered twice before anything is shown on the page. And there's uh, another case where I come multiple times. Uh, so uh, in React 17, when they try to get, um, when, when, uh, when they try to build that like, component stack, they will try to make your, they will try to make your component crash uh, on purpose. So it will feed like weird values into your hooks and things like that to make it crash. And that's how it builds like. And from the error, the, the stack trace that comes out from that crash, it will like figure out like what, what components have been rendered. So it's a, it's a really, really interesting way of, do, do thing, of doing things, but it means that like these patches can be called like way too many maps. So this is probably not going to work. But uh, the typical way will be that to write in the use effect, which will, which will work. Um, so th this is an issue because um, the render may take a while, and then we call the fetch only at the end. But so we are wasting a few milliseconds of like valuable load time where like we can actually like spend some spend that time instead of like waiting for render to finish, like actually start loading. And so the the, the UI can be more responsive when we do that. Um, so th this brings us to this uh, render as you fetch like uh, approach that uh, that is used within Facebook. So I think uh, the re the new relay that experimental version of relay will use this uh, method of like render as you fetch. So um, when you like do a bundle, like when you fetch the bundle for like a particular page, you will fetch the data requires at, at the same time. And this this concept of like a data requirements plus the component bundle is called an entry point. I don't know how it's used. Uh, there are no dots for it, uh, but it was mentioned in some in, one the, in some talk given by Facebook. So I and I think that's really interesting, and I really hope that uh, they come up with like they write some dots soon, so that we can uh, we can all like learn learn from that better. Uh, but essentially, this is the this is the way we do it. So um, this is also similar to how uh, how it's implemented in Relay, where we have a preload. So th this preload can be run like at the start of the app. Like so, in in this particular way, uh, if if you imagine this is one JS, if this is one JS file. Um, so when the module is loaded, we immediately start preloading. Already. So over here, we will do like for example, if you do a fetch, we will start fetching in this step. So when the, when the module loads, we start fetching before we even starts doing anything. Right, uh, and so we preload into a resource, and uh, when the component renders, we do a read. So, what this happens is that um, when we start rendering, um, because this is already preloaded, it is possible that by the time we get, when we start rendering this component, the resource has already finished away. Um, because, like, if it's very fast, right, you know, it's conceivable. Uh, so, and if that happens, then the read, uh, the resource, if you look at, if you look at this, uh, when it's resolved, when the promise is resolved. We will return the value. Um, so this is again, this is the create resource, right? We will call it a read and preload. So pre preload will basically like start loading, but it will not suspend. Uh, but read will suspend. Uh, so and the the suspend is that if the if the promise hasn't been is still like it's still working, it's not done yet. It will throw the sus uh, throw the promise. Otherwise, it will just return the value. And of course, if it's like rejected, it will throw the value, and then it will be caught by an error boundary somewhere. Um, yeah, so it's considered, so if this is already loaded, well, by the time you call read, post will be done. Uh, post will be, you have post, and so then you can just render post. And you, this component will not suspend. But uh, of course, if this is still being rendered, uh, if this is still being loaded, then read will suspend. So the, component, the whole component will suspend. So then the, the, it will look for, again, it will look for like a, uh, like a suspense component somewhere on top of it uh, to suspend. Yeah, so what we're going to do now, oh, the, oh yeah. Coming back to this, there is a there's um the problem with React Cache is that it's like a if you look at the readme, it's very like it's do not use in a real application. I mean all, almost all the React packages are like that contain this readme. Um do not use a real application, use it only super unstable. Uh and we can see that this already like it seems to be deprecated. Um so th this really React Cache really seems like just like the reference implementation, but I don't think it should be used in like for anything real. Uh but what has been recently added to React is something called React Fetch. Um, so if you find React Fetch, React Fetch is basically the same except that we have like it operates on like fetch. It only does fetches like a browser fetch. So you cannot use this for like CPU, like CPU, uh, like the work the so the worker thing or like any arbitrary promise. We can't do that. So we we have to use like React Cache for that or like you implement your own resource implementation. Um, but so React Fetch will give you a like a convenient way to like preload a URL. And then you, you can or you can fetch to do both preload and read. And so read it will be the it's the same it's the same concept. So there's always the preload step and the e step. 
or like a combination set, um, which will essentially fall back to a render as a batch implementation. Yeah. So what we can do now is that we can try to implement this like uh, right now. Uh, I, I don't think we can do this in any mode, so I am not going to try. Uh, but I've like come up with, uh, I've done like a toy app that we can, we can use for this. Uh, so I'm, I'm sorry that we end up back in, in a toy, in a toy application, but so I'll, I'll send you this link. Um, if you want to follow along, just like, just build this repository, uh, and then we, we can like implement it. So what we're going to do is that, um, it contains this contains like two pages like uh, suspended. It's basically a, like a page of cat apps, uh, cat pictures, and, and we, we are going to like uh, try to use suspense to load it instead. Uh, so currently the implementation uses uh, the regular old like use effect, and then there's a fetch. So this is a bubble fetch method, and then we will uh, we just fetch, and then it's a loading state. You know, typical typical stuff that you might be familiar, like a typical pattern that you might be familiar with. Um, yeah, so I guess we can like spend like two minutes like cloning this. Uh, yeah, so once you're done, just like yarn and yarn start as well. Uh, I didn't write any docs for this, but it is similar to NGS mod. So you just yarn to install dependencies and yarn start to like start that. And it will, it will just be a regular web app. Yeah, so two minutes, we'll come back at like 2.8. Oh, you have to use uh, Node 14, is it? Seems like it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the so... Question, uh, mark, question mark operator is uh, tripping it up. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if you, if you see that and you don't have Node 14, just like, just change this to a regular... This is just Node N for all development, so you can just change it to an all, like a... You know, like an like all. That will also work. Yeah, so you get some a lot of cats. Uh, you you see so. Okay, it's two eight. Uh, is everyone okay? It, does anyone need more need, need more time to set up? Chris, are you setting up? I am okay. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so th this is really just a toy app that like, I just kicked out. So uh, it's really ugly. Uh, the cats are nice, but the UI itself is like really, really ugly. Um, yeah, so again, uh, if you have looked at code, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I can just like run through the setup of this app to like give you some context about this whole application. Um, so this is using Webpack 5 and using, it's using a custom build of React. Um, and I to do that just because like, there are some packages that are not working. So I, like, I built React um, from my clone of React and I've like, stuck it into, into the code base. So your, the code that you clone will already have it. It's over here. Uh, so you see a whole bunch of like, React packages. So what we are going to, we are going to use these like, React packages instead of the packages that are on NPM. Um, but I didn't actually, I didn't do any changes then. So this, this, this is a master build, uh, without any other changes. Um, yeah, and uh, Babel, yeah, there's nothing interesting in Babel. Um, yeah, so the entry point is here, uh, index.js. Uh, we will basically create an element, like some div, uh, and we will render into div. So again, we are using create root and render. So this is already in concurrent mode. Uh, and also we read uh, in strict mode just so that we can see some errors, see any errors. See whether there are any errors, like, which I don't think there are. There will be any. Um, but I'll say that. Also, uh, this is also set up with uh, real refresh. So we will get a very nice hot reloading. Uh, it's not, uh, not really hot reloading. 
Is it all reloading? I, I don't know. I don't know what they call it now. Uh, yeah, but basically, like, like, life reloads. Uh, and it will be very, it's super sweet. Uh, th this configuration is copied from the scaling profile config. Um, yeah. So, and then, uh, so the index of JS will render an app. And this is the app. Uh, so we basically have two tabs, uh, and two components. So classic cat and suspended cat. So they currently, these two files, classic cat and suspended cat are currently identical. They, there's literally no difference between them. Um, and we, we have a, we have a tabs, we have tabs that like, so you pick suspended cat, this will be the, the rendered suspended cats component. Classic cats will render the other. Uh, yeah. And they do not cache data. So you will, you will see everything like below in the Um, yeah, and uh, the, the way it fetches, so if you look at a classic cat page, uh, we have a classic cat page component that just renders a cat list in a div. Uh, the cat list will be responsible for loading a list of cat. Um, so you will basically load it into this like array. This will be an array, and this array will load will, will render into cat rows. And so every cat row has like a cat object, and the cat object has like things like URL and ID. Uh, there are some other stuff that we don't really care about uh, today. And uh, so. What we also do, uh, even though these are ING elements, uh, we do a custom fetch. We, we fetch it manually. Instead of using the ING SRC equals to that, the image URL, we, we load it manually just so that we can, um, we can see how suspense can improve the UI uh, later on. Uh, so, but we will basically do a manual fetch. And uh, so we will, we will need to maintain the state, the loading state, and also the, uh, the image element. So the, we are going to like, do a little bit of hack here um, because I couldn't get this working any other way. So we'll, we'll, uh, the, all, all this fetch, uh, fetch whatever stuff are all implemented in the cat api.js file. Okay, and um, so the, the first one will use my API key. I just like update it. Um, yeah, you can impersonate me if you want to. Uh, this will fetch a JSON list, and uh, the fetch cat image will basically like render, uh, will load it in an image element. Uh, but it will be a promise. So we can use React Cache later to like to grab this in the dustbin. Um, yeah. So then this is a, like pretty much an overview of the whole project. Uh, so now, so what we can do now is we can try to like, like apply suspense to things. Um, so you actually, if we think about this, right? Um, yeah, if, if you think about this, the, the, the cat list, this is the classic waterfall like loading problem where like we load, we need to load the list of cats first before we load all the individual like cat images. So th this is like, uh, it's, called, it's called waterfall just because that one depends on another. Um, there's not, not really any real way we can, we can improve this, except that uh, instead of like rendering and then, uh, so we basically what happens here is that we render the cat list. Then when, after it's done rendering, then we start loading, right? So if, if you look at the, the conceptually like a timeline, right? This is basically what happens, right? So um, yeah, render, once render is done, then the use effect will kick in and then the spec will start. So what we can do is we can use suspense to like, try to like, you know, do this. Um, so that we can do a, like a render, render as you fetch as you render, render as you fetch. Whatever, whatever that was, yeah. Um, yeah, so we, we can do that with the suspend on the suspend cat page. So I copied the implementation, so the code is exactly the same. So, but we can just replace it right now with like suspense code. Um, so the very first thing that we want to do is that we want to wrap, uh, we want to, we want to define like where we want to suspend, where like our suspense boundary, right? So um, what, we, what we, we can just do is we can just wrap the suspended cat page, like the cat list. Um, so because this is the one that fetches the, the cat list, right? So we can just wrap it here. So what we can just do is we can, we can just do a suspend. I need suspend. Yeah, and then we, we need to define a problem. Uh, so if we look at our slide, uh, if we refer back to our slide. Yeah, suspend for back. And then we, uh, this is a fallback component that will be displayed when there is a, when it's suspended. So we'll do that, we'll do So it's gonna, yeah, so currently this wouldn't do anything. So, um, yeah, but, but it makes sense, right? So when scanly suspends, we will, uh, we'll display a spinner. That, that's basically what they say. Uh, and, but currently it will not suspend because we are still doing this use effects. So if you look at this, uh, oh, suspend not defined. Yeah, we need to import that. Yeah, so um, currently it doesn't look like anything actually, which is expected. Um, but by the way, always just like interrupt me with questions or like tell me if you cannot follow or if I'm going too fast or whatever, just, just, just let me know. If you, you can PM me on, uh, on the Zoom chat as well. Um, 
Yeah, so the next thing we want to do is that we want to like, uh, we, we just want to, we want to like suspend instead of like doing this UV effect stuff. So what we can do is that we can, we can try to wrap uh, this patch in React patch. Okay, th this is, uh, I have not tried this. So we, we will see whether it works. Uh, yeah, YOLO. Uh, but the, the worst thing, the, the worst case is that we will just use React patch, which I, which I tried. I have not tried React patch ever. But I've never ever got it work. So we will, well, we will try it now. So, um, we we'll just import that. So, well, how do we import things? Here? So we'll just do this. Uh, I believe it's preload. No, it's just not this thing. On the attack. So if you don't want to follow this one, it's fine. Like, uh, I don't even know whether it will. Actually, we can just check whether it exists. And we, uh, yeah, over here we do need to rename it because otherwise uh, you'll patch with the global fetch. Okay. I mean the uh, global fetch function. Oh, that, that works. Okay. Um so what we can do is we can export a new function. So uh create like fetch. Uh create fetch like resource. And what we want to do is we want to return fetch. Uh react fetch. So the, the react fetch API, if we if you notice, the React Fetch API is basically the same as Fetch. So we are just going to call it the same way that we call the browser Fetch. So we take this and we stick it in here. Yeah, so right now we, we have a, did, this will, actually this is not a resource anymore because we are, we are busy reading it now. Um, is there any way to create a resource? Seems like there isn't. So what we what we can do is that we can just like do a preload. So we, uh, the preload will return nothing. Uh, but I think it's cache based on the URL, so that that's what I meant. So we, what what we can do is that we can then we the when we preload. Hmm. Okay, I guess when, when we, after we preload, we want to fetch it. So we will just like export two, two, two functions. Uh, so, so uh, fetch, uh, I mean, we fetch this resource and we preload. And this resource. So then, uh, yeah, I'll just. Yeah, I, I um this is really ugly, but uh it should work. So we the, the second one will basically read the result. Um so read read kind of these results will read the result and uh it will return the response. Um and this will do this this will do the preload. So what we can do now is that in the suspend suspended cap page, we can actually do the preload like right at the start. So we, we, we can we, we can start pre preloading over here. So when when the module goes, we want to start like start loading. Um and then inside here, we will just like read the, read the result. So if this, if all goes well, we should be able to do like, um, that's my autocomplete. We can this result, so this can be like this. And uh, if we notice the, this returns a fetch response, and a fetch response has like, um, has like block, array, JSON, whatever. Um, so what we're going to do is we want we want the JSON. So we'll take like uh, this one. And then we are just going to console all of it. And we don't care about everything else anymore because we are expecting the read to suspend. So then we will we'll, uh, if it suspends correctly, hopefully it works. Uh, the spinner up here will render. Uh, so we can we can just save the and see what happens. Could not read the cache. Oh this this happened just now as well. Um, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I have no idea why this is happening. Uh, I looked at the code and I don't know what's going on. So this, this is not working. Okay. So the backup is to use React Cache. Oh, does anyone know how to fix this? Uh, I think it's all right. Yeah, okay. Uh, let, let's dump that in. Uh, let, let's use React Cache. Okay, let's use React Cache. So we, we can import, um, React Cache is more, 
this lower level I, in my opinion, so it's also easier to understand. Uh, so we do unstable okay, resolve. If you try to npm this, uh, yeah, this is uh, interesting aside. But if you try to, if uh, if you try to npm install React Fetch, uh, React Fetch is a registered as a third party. Some other somebody else took the React Fetch name, so you are not going to get this React Fetch that you're using now. Um, yeah. So npm npm problem. So what we can do is we can do a create cat cat list resource, and what we uh, do, yeah, and how we actually create it is that we are we are just going to return you know, create resource. And create resource with the uh, fetch cat list uh, function. Everything else we need. Right. Um, so what, what this will do, so the, if you look at create resource, it takes a fetch function. Uh, this is just a generic fetch, it's not like any particular kind of fetch, but it's uh, just a general fetch, please help me fetch my data somehow um, function. Uh, it will take some sort of input and it returns a Denimo. And a Denimo is just like a uh, abstracted, I mean, like a basic interface of a promise, but it's, as long as anything as a dot, then it will be a then for anything. Yeah, so a denable is just whatever there is a dot, then. So a promise will, will, will fit this type. Uh, so we, we, as long as that function returns a promise, which it does, because fetch returns a promise. So we're just going to do that. Um, we're just going to pass that a query result. And so um, create resource when uh, when we call read later is going to throw it's going to throw the, this promise. Uh, otherwise we are going to get a result. So we can just use this immediately. So we'll just take um, we'll come back here and do like um, okay, can this resource um, and we will we'll do out here. So uh, cat this resource and we're going to do cat this resource for uh, to call this reload. So it will start preloading. Before, uh, before it starts in the name. And then we'll do uh, dot read. And this should work. Or not. Or not, it's not pretty anymore. It's called a uh, public resource. Sometimes it can only be held, right? Oh, that's weird. Is it because I tried to do Huh. This seems like a ad blocker thing. Yes. Suspense works. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. So did, did everybody manage to follow that? Uh, I know I was like debugging on the fly, but uh, yeah, so we, we can see the cat is that that will return. Um so if, if we see that again, um yeah, the, the, does this actually so I think that this actually catches the result. So if we like name all the cats, I mean all, all the okay, we name all the cats here. Okay, still it still works again. Oh well. Um yeah. Yeah, but basically this is how it works. So you can see that the code went from like, you know, uh, this use effect and uh, having to manage all the states, the two states. Now we are, it's just one line and a bit. Right, so th this like dramatically like simplifies the, the, the like, components that can, um, that need to load data. Uh, and we, we can also do that, do the same thing for, for, for this cat rule. So, uh, so we can do that. But um, in this case, we need to, we need a, a URL over here. So, um, I like this where we can create a single resource and just use it everywhere. We actually need to like uh, create multiple resources. Um, so I believe this should catch the resources. Um, so uh, this 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 as far as I got uh, well while I was preparing for this uh, this workshop. So I I've, I've not managed to uh, I've never actually to come up with like a list of promises here. But I have um, yeah okay let, let's just try to do it from or not. Yeah, okay, let, let's try doing scratch. Um, does anyone need, need time to like uh 
title digestions, digestions, or should we just like import it? Seems like everyone's okay. Okay. Yeah, so uh, we will do we'll do something similar up here, we'll just do a great result. Um but it's a like cat image resource. And setting a URL. So what we want to do is that we want to read create resource and we read the URL. That doesn't make sense. Okay, I, I give up. I'm just going to look at my. I had a suspense demo that I wrote a while back. Um. Okay, I guess like in the create resource, it like figures it out. Like it gets the so fetch cat list, fetch cat image URL. Um. Okay, so one dumb solution that I can think of. That we can we can move this. So we basically like capture, capture so so you made this into a higher order function. Uh, so when you call URL, it's gonna capture the URL, and then there will be. No, we don't need this. Basic. Yeah, we don't need the async anymore. Um, yeah. So they, they, this will return a function that takes in nothing and returns a promise. So they, this is just a, a little hack. Uh, it should probably work. Uh, and what we're gonna do is that we will now need to like maintain a list of the resources. Um, so I think we need to do like uh resources. Here. Uh, so we would like give this order in a state. Uh, so we can resource cat image resources. So the empty array. Um or, hmm. I believe we can do a use effect. So then we'll we'll just like some cats. So then we'll do like cat image resources. Cat cat image resources. Uh cat something. Then like show cat image resource with cat the URL. Uh we will not miss. Does it make sense? We can look at docs. Uh, I believe there is. No preload. Yeah, the dogs are great. I believe the dogs. But yeah, it, it should be something similar. Um, I, I guess we can just see whether this works. Uh, but uh, none, none of these things are going to work. So we need to like zip them, which is a, sounds like a mess. Um, but instead of doing that, we just going to hack. So this will be an object. Oh, it's error. So th th this will be an object with like two, two keys, a cat and a resource. Uh, this is really ugly. And so we have restructured the cat and the resource out of this, which will then we, what we what we can do is that we can uh, resource that to the 
Holy shit. If it doesn't work, then we will just get rid of it. Then we will return the get rid as flat before. Except that now the, the cat rule needs a needs a result. So we'll do like cat image result. And then we need to actually use it. Um, so we'll come down here and then just take the resource. Um, and what we do is that we'll do like image element plus a resource or loop. So th this was our spend. And then we can get rid of again, like same as uh, before, we can get rid of all this. So you'll just it should just render this so you went oh not not load uh, you'll do read um yeah so it will jump back up to this assessment and that should last if everything goes well no can I read of undefined oh that's strange. Am I saying something? Oh, it's called image resource. Oh, yeah, okay. Image is, uh, yeah, image change resource. This is why types are useful. Uh, we don't have any like types, okay. Yeah, so yeah, so you, you, you can see that, right? It um it works slightly differently now. Because currently we are suspending right now, when the moment any cat is trying to load, we suspend all the way up here, which is not what we want. So we only have one spinner until everything loads and everything just jumps in. All right, you, you can see that, right? Um, oh, it's cache now. So I guess we need to reload. Is it? Boom, all coming at, one, all coming at the same time. So th this is, uh, in my opinion, is, uh, I mean, because we, we don't want to suspend the whole list. We want to suspend individual ones, right? So what we can do is we can just like wrap uh, all these in suspense, um, like people. I mean, like, like a long time. So we do the suspense. Oh, I can get rid of this. So if you go back to You saw that? So we are basically back to the back, back to the same experience that we had before. Where like when, when we load the, you know, they all come in individually, like the the spinner, as one spinner will appear for every single image, and they're all just like load one by one. Um so like what's wrong with this? So it seems like we have gotten back to the same experience. Uh but there is a something like fundamentally wrong with this, like from a UX perspective. That like uh if we if we look at it closely, when, when I click classic cats, you will notice that all the because the sizes are not known beforehand. So when um, the, all the spinner are this small, right? Then the images will appear like when in random order, right? Right. So whenever like any image is downloading, it will just like come in, and then it will like it will just expand. Um. So all the cats will jump around. Uh, so the first the first cat the first cat loads is fine because it will not get displaced, but the bottom cats will all get displaced as the ones above it load. So you will just the the layout will just keep coming up. Um. Right. So so you see that 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 is um, this can be improved. Um. Yeah. So the the way we can currently do this uh, in React, like if we in the current, like without without suspense, uh, it will be quite kind of, it, it's not very easy to do this, right? You need to like, you need to like write a way to detect like, um, like which, uh, like which fetch has completed and then we only render up to that particular fetch and everything else we like render skin or something. Uh, but React gives us, React gives us, uh, data loading gives us a new, uh, new API for this. And the new API is called uh, suspense list. And this is how you use it. So um, if you okay, let, let's just put this side by side the code. Um, so, so you notice that we have a list here, we have a list of suspense elements. So this is kind of similar to this like resources on map, right? We get a list of suspense elements. All we need to do is wrap it with a suspense list. And what that will do is that it will it will only render up to a particular like suspend, like a particular like thing that has suspended. Everything on top will be rendered, even and uh, things below will not be rendered. Even if there is a, a promise that is like say a fetch, the image has been fetched for some image below. Um, if 
there is a element on top that is, that is still suspended, the bottom one will not be loaded. Okay, so it, it will it will be a bit clearer what once once we like uh like well it, what, once once we type it out. Uh, I think when, when you see it happen, it should be pretty clear. Um yeah, so what we can do is we can just like wrap it here. So we'll do like Where does this map then? Okay, yeah. So then we'll do like suspense list. This, no? Okay. Yeah, and then we need to import it. Uh, otherwise, we'll. And we can go back to the chats. So that, that was a classic. That was a classic. If we try to suspend it, it should only it should appear in order. Oh no, it died. Okay. Well, what happened? Suspense list is not is it un, undefined? I mean is it unstable? Yeah, okay, it is actually unstable suspense. So. Okay, see that again. If we click it, that didn't work. <laughs> so uh, let me see whether there's like a oh, prop that I missed. Let, let's try this. I think review order forwards is what we want so that it will like review like forwards. Yeah. So, but I don't actually know. Did that work? So we click now. Yeah, that it will appear. It will appear in order. So you don't see like images jumping around, and you, you can see that this is like this is super easy to do, right? I mean, you, uh, it's just like pretty much one one component and like two props, and we, we get this like pretty complex behavior that is very hard to do. Uh, that it will take a lot of code to like accomplish in a in a, like legacy React. Um, yeah. So that is pretty much all I have for the suspense uh section. Is is there like, does anyone have any like uh, questions? So essentially, in the whole list, uh, suppose the later images are already fetched, but they will still not be displayed until the the ones at the front are are fetched and displayed. Is that correct? Yeah. I think, yeah. Okay. But then, okay, just curious, does this, does your cat's API return you like the size of the images? They do, yeah. So what we can, eh? yeah, I, I don't know, we can. Uh... Because I think the goal here is like to prevent layout shift, right? So if you want yeah. to prevent layout shift, then perhaps. Yeah. I think the, maybe the better method here is just to like, you know, yeah. uh, just render the, like give, draw like boxes for each of the pictures. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, so for, for this particular thing, uh, for this particular like app, we could do that if we had the if the JSON included like uh, the with the dimension information we can we can do that, um, but there, there I mean there, there are certain um, downsides to that also lah because then you need to fetch you, you uh, the server needs to send over the, the information which will blow up the data, uh, the the JSON payload then which will then delay the initial render, um, yeah, then there, there are also other things like uh, you may not know like how. Uh, in, in this case, because it's just a simple image, it's quite simple. But like for other cases, for example, you have text that flows, that needs to flow, uh, then, then you cannot like pre-compose so easily. Yeah. So th this is just, uh, yeah, th there's definitely a lot of ways to like, accomplish the same uh, goal. There's, you can also like manually implement this like, assessment list yourself, like uh, impact yourself. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. 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 So I'm coming towards the end of this workshop. Um, let me go. Let me go to the other slides. Yeah. So then there's there's additional uh, API that I didn't manage to show, which is the use transition API. The and the reason is just because I don't. I still have no idea how this works. Um. So according to the docs, we 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 can we can look at the docs. Uh, for this. 
Um, I think he's here. Yeah, we, we, we probably need to ask uh, someone working for like wait wait for the docs to be updated or like wait, like ask somebody working at Facebook. Um, but the idea is that you you do use transition as like to basically like like it's not really a debounce, but you delay the transition. So like for example, you navigate to another page. So and yes, for like, example, you go from like the oh not the end. Uh, if you go from like a venue page to a modis page, for example, uh, what we want to do is that if the modis page has not loaded, um, tell me wrong. Yeah, if like the timetable is not loaded, we don't want to flash the, the loading page. The, the use transition will allow you to like wait a little bit. Uh, so if this page suspends, you'll wait a little bit for before you show a loading a spinner. So that while you while waiting by, by waiting a bit, I mean like you, you just stay on the venue page. So that when you click timetables, you will just stay on venue page for a little bit longer before going to the timetable. Um, so the, the because the flash uh, apparently according to research the flash of that spinner is not not very good UX and people prefer the wait a little bit and then switching over to that uh, to another page um, basically to reduce like visual like trash um, yeah so that that is what the the high level goal of the use uh, transition API um, and that it seems to be the main use case for it as well uh, and the docs recommend that you that we stick this into uh, like the UI components in the in your design uh, your design system, which we do not have now, uh, either in NUS modes or like in this file, so we can't really like show this right now. Um, but essentially, it's also used uh, these transition again. Uh, the timer MS is deprecated uh, because they realized that uh, uh, configuring. If you look at the PR, like you can, you can search this on the the list of the the React repos pull request. Um, but the the timer MS like usually is only used. Like most of the use cases, there seem to be two use cases. I can't remember the second one, but the first one is that. Uh, people mainly use it for like page transitions, so it doesn't really make sense for it to be configurable. Uh, then the second one, I can, I can uh, but you, you can you can read into this further. That PR description is quite detailed, so you can get some insights for, from it from that PR. Yeah, so this is a use transition. Uh, this use transition is slightly more complicated than the it is a quite a bit more complicated than the use deeper value. Use deeper value is like really simple, you get a deeper value, but this one has an actual start transition method, a function that you call. To do like state updates, so all the state updates that are done within the start transition, the transition will be like deferrable essentially. Um, yeah, so that that's how the use transition code works, which we will not like try today. And yeah, so uh, closing closing remarks. Um, yeah, so there are although concurrent mode is cool. Uh, there are there are quite a few problems. Uh, with it right now. Um, the the first is that um. Uh, there is a potential like bugs for uh like a source of bugs for more for more complex apps. Um and th this is like it's a thing called pairing. So remember how concurrent mode like um splits renders like slices like renders into like different like times uh, like slices over time. And then um uh, during the, the gaps, like other other things can happen, right? This means that like you can render some components using uh like if you're depending on like say global state, like say like Redux or like Redux state or something. Um, if you, if if you um, so React can render some components with some global state, and then during that pause, you want you mutate the global state, and then uh in the next like render step, like uh some other components are rendered with that new with that new global state. Uh, but the the if React doesn't know that the global state is outdated and the old the old components have to be like the there's outdated and has to be like thrown out. Um, it will just continue rendering, which means that at the end, when a commit uh, when a commit phase happens, what's committed on the screen is that you can have like two components showing like two different um things, like one out one outdated and one updated. Uh, so this this called pairing. So uh, I mean, it's definitely not just like one uh like two one outdated and one updated. Is that because it's split into so many like slices, right? You can have like potentially like a lot of like, you know, like a spray of like different time steps of data like all over your all over your UI. Uh, which can lead to quite a few bugs. Uh, so there, there are some ways that they are trying to fix it now, but uh, th this seems to be quite a uh, like it's quite seems to be quite difficult to uh, debug as well. Uh, and there is a repo like if you if you Google this, there's probably you may be, you may be able to find this particular repo that like goes through a whole bunch of different like uh, data storage uh, technologies like Redux and some some other different things, and it will tell you like uh, you know there are some pairing issues here and there. Yeah. So th this is something that uh, needs to be like really studied if you really want to like adopt concurrent in your app right now. 
Um, and the second one is that uh, so something that we already talked about earlier is that um, it's not really ready for production use outside Facebook just because uh, you don't really have like support from the React core team outside Facebook. So um, again, the docs are like really, it's also outdated and it's also incomplete. Um, so it, uh, if you really want to update, uh, you want, really want to adopt it outside Facebook, it's, uh, it's quite difficult. Uh, but you can, if you wanted to, like, like as we just showed today. Uh, but I don't think NUS mode is going to adopt concurrent mode just yet, uh, just because it's so unstable. Yeah, so then the last one, the API is really unstable. So like uh, the August, in August, they removed that timeout NS. They disabled that timeout NS parameter. Um, and the other thing, so like uh, methods get renamed, uh, methods get deprecated. So like the, the unstable create resource uh, of React Cache, uh, it came out a while back, then after that, then now it's like considered old and seems to be going away. Um, and, and also then uh, the, another issue will be that third-party libraries also. Uh, if your project is large enough, you probably have a lot of like old third-party libraries that may, be, that may be outdated and you may not have enough, uh, like you may not like really support concurrent mode well. Um, yeah, so you can, yeah, you can have a lot of like weird issues like that. Um, so adopting concurrent mode now is probably not going to be a great idea, but you, but I, I think, I still think it's a great thing to try, uh, just, just to see what can be done. Uh, and I, I hope like this workshop today has like given you like more insight and like ju just like a taste of how to, how concurrent mode can be used and how it can help your apps. Uh, going forward, like hopefully, Kongham will be released soon in the future. Yeah, so thanks. Uh, yeah, so Chris has sent a feedback form for this workshop in the in the link, but it's also on screen right now. Um, yeah, so th thanks for coming today. Uh, is there's anyone like I'm I'm ready I'm uh, I'm willing to stay for a while if anyone wants to like talk about like discuss more or like have any questions. Yeah, so thanks.